and of all of the homilists I've heard through the years, yours stand out because of how personal they are. Mm. They are so striking. And there are very few. And in fact, I can only remember one other priest who sings during his homily. <laughs> <laughs> It's one of the things that I think everyone loves about your homilies mm -hmm. because you make those songs that are contemporary songs suit the gospel or whatever passage that you're trying to pull into the homily. They suit just perfectly. And it's like you start singing and it's like, where is he going with this mm -hmm. <laughs> Did you start out that way? Or did you grow into the style that you have for your homilies? I think my role as a homilist is something that uh, I take very seriously. I think any priest would say that, so I'm going to... Uh, but it, it, it's something that uh, always is a challenge to me. It, it makes me nervous. Uh, but it really is something for which I seem to have uh, energy. And where I experience my own giftedness and a, a sense that the Lord is at work. Uh, but there, you know, there have been lessons that I've learned in preaching uh, that have been important that have helped me over time. I would say one way that I could express it is to say that whenever uh, I don't do this 100% well all the time, but one of the principles that I bring uh, to the preparation of a homily is to recognize a distinction between what I want to say and what could be helpful for people to hear. <laughs> so that, that touches, you know, practical things like uh, my use of humor or how I'll approach something humorously or whether or not that's a good idea, uh, whether it's time for a joke. <laughs> a lot of folks in the pews will uh, are warmed up. Uh, by a joke, uh, sometimes I do that, not, not too often. Anything personal about my own journey, I ask myself is, you know, is this intended to be a pilgrim? You know, is this one pilgrim speaking to other pilgrims from a position of, uh, a position as a sacramental minister? Or is it, you know, do I just need people to know something about me? So the, there are questions that I have learned to ask myself about what I'm doing and who am I serving. Um, and, and, you know, I would say this about preaching. It, it's, it's not something that I uh, lose sleep over in, in the sense that, uh, you know, if I can use this analogy, in baseball, if you're successful three times out of ten, you'll go to the Hall of Fame. <laughs> and that, that's something that I think about or keep in the back of my mind when, I, when I'm preparing to preach and when I'm doing that. Uh, you know, because of... You know, my, my experience of preaching and being a preacher, at least when I come away from it, sometimes I feel as though I've, I've done very well. Other times I don't feel as, as though I did particularly well, but someone might come up to me after a Mass and say, you don't know how helpful that was. And I, I thought it was, you know, a foul out <laughs> or a strikeout or, you know, a sort of... Uh, uh, so I, I, I think I've learned to... Uh, let go of the ministry of preaching in ways that can help me relax and, and take an approach to it uh, 
that is about service and, and helps me to ask honest questions of myself about what, what the people of God uh, could hear that would be helpful to them. And finally, I would say it's my approach is rooted in the readings and what the readings say. The scripture, the word of God, really contains the message. Uh, and uh, my, my message comes from the word of God. Uh, and it's, it's focused on uh, the readings. It can also include, you know, different moments in the celebration of the Eucharist that might be a helpful connection and help people to continue to celebrate or hear God's word as, as the liturgy unfolds or a feast day or a saint or, or things like that can, uh, can become part of the message or can be a focus of uh, how to employ the word. But uh, I, I try as much as I can to let it be about the word of God and not the word of God.